So wow, what an honor I have. I get to introduce my congresswoman. I live in San Francisco. <clears throat> yes, Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi, the House Democratic leader. Obviously, Congresswoman Pelosi is someone who doesn't need an introduction because we all know her and admire her greatly. But because I have the mic right now, I'm going to do it anyways. She wants me to do it very short. I told her it was only an hour and a half. And um, I'm also going to just say a few words, not only about her, but about the Nancy Pelosi Award for Immigration and Civil Rights Policy, so you understand what's going on here. So, Ms. Pelosi first became a member of Congress in 1987. Since then, she's been, as you all know, an avid supporter of all the issues that we hold near and dear to our hearts, including support for easy and low cost, for easy, for easy and low cost access to health care and housing, support for HIV, AIDS, research and services, support for civil rights, including rights for members of LGBT communities and other minority communities, and of course, as she and I were talking about earlier tonight, unwavering support for immigrants and for fair and just comprehensive immigration reform. Not just immigration reform, but fair and just immigration reform. Congresswoman Pelosi has been an ardent supporter of the ILRCs and has worked with us for over 20 years. She was our first member of our, of our advisory board and remains in that role to this day. She was a recipient of our 1990 Philip Burton Award. And we have worked with Congresswoman Pelosi's wonderful staff for so many years and have received nothing but the highest degree of professionalism and assistance every time we engage them. And I just want to say quickly, Harriet's here, Verna, Dan, and Camilla, thank you very much for all your hard work on behalf of immigrants. Also, I just want to give a quick plug to a video, a wonderful video Congresswoman Pelosi did for us about four years ago that we showed in this very same hotel at our Burton event. Um, wonderful celebrating our 30th anniversary. It's still on our website, and for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a must-see. In fact, it rivals her daughter's stuff, which is outstanding. <laughs> um, so, as many of you know, and as Lisa alluded to, um, the late Philip Burton was a member of Congress, and we named this event after him. And his wife, Sally Burton, was also a member of Congress. And they were both very close to uh, Congresswoman Pelosi. Um, they were both very good friends of Congresswoman Pelosi's. And she's now to, uh, actually elected to their seats. First Philip Burton, then Sally Burton, and now Congresswoman Pelosi. She celebrated 25 years, she just told me 26 now, in Congress. And the ILRC wanted to do something special for that, for her unwavering dedication to advocating on behalf of immigrants in San Francisco, the Bay Area, and throughout the United States. So, to honor both Nancy Pelosi and Philip Burton together, and I'm sure if Congressman Burton were here today, he would be proud that we were doing this. I'm pleased to announce that this is the inaugural Nancy Pelosi Award for Immigration and Civil Rights Policy. We're so lucky to have Ms. Pelosi here to hand out this first award. So what we're doing now and going forward is we have every year the Philip Burton Awards Dinner, and at this dinner we hand out the Philip Burton Award for Advocacy and or Lawyering. And from now on, we are also going to hand out the Nancy Pelosi Award for Immigration and Civil Rights Policy. So without further ado, it's my great privilege and honor to welcome the present Democratic Leader of the House of Representatives and the soon-to-be Speaker of the House, Leader Nancy Pelosi. Thank you. Thank you all.
Thank you all very much. Thank you, Eric, for your very generous remarks and for informing us of this remarkable thing. What an honor for me uh, to have my name associated with an award for immigration and civil rights. Because immigration is for me, and many of you have heard me say this over and over again, the lifeblood of our democracy. Our founders founded a country based on the premise that every generation would have the responsibility to make the future better for the next generation and that we all had a responsibility in that regard. It became known as the American dream. And every family that came to America, every immigrant, whether it was two days ago or two centuries ago, uh, with that commitment to making the future better for their families, with that hope, that determination, that optimism, those American qualities of positive thinking about the future, well, every immigrant makes America more American. So we think that this is a very patriotic thing that you are doing. And we thank you, Eric, for your work as the executive director uh, for ILRC. We thank the staff. We thank the board, all of you, for what you do uh, to en uh, enable this constant reinvigoration of America, this constant renewal of spirit in our country. And that's what makes our country great. Uh, that is what supports our democracy. That, to me, is what immigration is all about for our country. So I'm very honored uh, to have this award, my name associated with this award. I accept that uh, humbly, but I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm thrilled. <laughs> The president of the board, Lisa, where's Lisa? She did so many tasks tonight, filled so many shoes, does so much on the ongoing. Thank you, Lisa, for your wonderful, wonderful leadership. Bill Hing, he has really been my immigration uh, mentor. <laughs> So great, and uh, of course, introduced to him by the Burtons. Uh, he, uh, right from the start, when I was in Congress, almost immediately we were involved in what happened in Tiananmen Square, and we wanted to write legislation to protect the students and scholars in America. And Bill, who knows more about naturalization? Who has taught more people, uh, lawyered more people in the rest than Billing? He is a national resource. He's my hero, Billing. Thank you for your tremendous, <laughs> tremendous leadership. Wasn't it beautiful and inspiring to hear Stephen Lee and to hear Denise Rojas in their presentation? Wow, wow. And of course, we will get to our honorees. But thank you for sharing your stories with us. And actually, your stories are what I think has have brought us to a place where the president issued his executive order with a little help from Dick, Senator Dick Durbin urging him along the way. But more about that in a moment. We have two great honorees tonight, and I have the privilege of presenting the award to one of them, uh, but not, without, not before saying something about Philip Burton. As was mentioned by Eric, he was really a force, and, and Lisa, he was really a force in our community. In April, it marked the 30th anniversary of, of his passing. His wife followed him in office for Chairman Salah Burton in the tradition of, of a commitment to uh, fair uh, and comprehensive immigration reform as an ongoing, uh, ongoing process in our country. And I know firsthand of the commitment that they had, how close uh, they have been uh, to the communities of interest in terms of immigration. And the theme of your evening, uh, that uh, the, uh, the time is now, is really, what is it? is really what Phil Burton was all about. Everything was about now for him. It was about whether it was about LGBT rights, whether it was about HIV fight. He was one of the first people to ever have any legislation or mention the words in the Congress of the United States, whether it was preserving the Golden Gate National Recreation. Everything about Phil and about civil rights and respect for the dignity and worth of every person, and that included every person who came to our America documented fully or otherwise. Uh, so it, it, I, it's really pretty exciting for me who knew and loved Phil and loved Sala and who follow in their footsteps 
in the, the seat that they held in Congress uh, to see you all honor uh, the tradition that they established, the commitment that they had, the passion that they had on this subject. And again, as Lisa said, most of you, are, 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 did you say it, Eric, or both of you said it? Most peop maybe people in here are too young to remember. Uh, but thank you for honoring uh, the leadership of Philip Burton. And so I think it is quite exciting to, have, to receive an award. I was excited in 1990 when I got my award, but that was a long time ago. And now that the memory lingers on of the leadership, and the urgency continues. The urgency continues. So the time for Philip was always now to get something done. The time is now for us to pass res uh, comprehensive immigration reform that respects the rights, the dignity, and worth, that understands, that protects our borders, yes, protects our workers, stops the exploitation of people coming into our country, uh, is, gives us a path to legalization and to citizenship, but also protects our values as a country, that we recognize the importance of immigration to our country. We see it as a positive force, uh, as I mentioned earlier. And it is in that spirit that so many people have come together, whether it's evangelicals from the right, uh, so many people coming together uh, to support this. But the path is not an easy one, and we want to make sure that obstacles that are placed there uh, to get votes are not insurmountable obstacles, just a bump in the road, but not something that will dilute the effectiveness of the bill. Uh, I just, if I may, have a point of personal privilege and acknowledge that when people were introduced, I noticed that uh, a member of the Warren family was introduced, uh, Jim Warren, and I, and my, um, I had two um, commencement addresses earlier in May, and one of them was on the very day that uh, on May 17th was on the anniversary of the Brown versus Board of Education decision. And I was speaking up at uh, UC Davis School of Law, and I was saying to them that we in California should take so much pride. I mean, I, my other speech was in Baltimore, so I said we took, in Baltimore, that was a couple of days later, we took pride in the role that Thurgood Marshall played, lawyering that and other lawyers too. <laughs> <laughs> but in California, we took pride in the fact that um, Chief Justice Warren not only saved the day, but snatched that decision from where it might have been had God not taken Chief Justice Vincent to his heavenly reward. <laughs> May he rest in peace. <laughs> we call that divine intervention. <laughs> but that Justice Warren would would preside and make it a unanimous decision, a unanimous decision. And, and the school at, at, at uh, UC Davis is named for Martin Luther King, and uh, uh, Justice Warren was there for the dedication, and his words are inscribed there. But anyway, we in California should take great pride in the roles that we had played in all of these issues, because they're all connected. They're all about respecting the dignity and worth of every person, the value, the spark of divinity, the whatever uh, value you place on every person in our society. So thank your family, and I, I clearly, clearly the tradition lives on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just had to say, I just had to say. <laughs> so, but and again, it it is all. Uh, this award is for immigration and civil rights, so it is uh, it is connected to what we're talking about and the importance of the courts. But we have to have a good law uh, to get this done, and uh, that's what Mr. Uh, uh, the Honorable Dick Durbin is working on. Before I go to him, though, I do want to say uh, that being with Jose Antonio Vargas is quite an honor. Yeah, quite an honor. Is he eloquent? I mean, I think in the last three weeks he's been at 130 events. Is it about that, Is it about that Jose, or a couple months? Not that long a time but all over the country in great demand. Think of the courage that he has had coming out in so many ways in terms of, of his uh, status. 
And that is not without courage. This all takes a great deal of courage. And that's why we love the Dreamers so much, because they have so much courage, and their families have so much courage. So, Jose, it's an honor to be with you. Jose Antonio, it's an honor to be with you as you receive the Immigration and Civil Rights Advocacy Award. A dreamer yourself, a journalist, uh, written about all of these experiences, really communicating on the subject in a way uh, that is making a tremendous difference. Again, congratulations to you on this award tonight. Now on the subject of Dick Durbin, I am so excited that he is receiving the Nancy Pelosi Award. <laughs> In the tradition of Philip Burton. Now one thing you have to know about Philip Burton, and he used to have worried about himself quite a bit, he was operational. He got the job done. Deep values, broad knowledge, always strategic in his thinking, but how do we get the job done? So we have before us, and we are in the presence of greatness. This is a great man, a great idealist with a practical bent. So he, he has uh, the vision, the best possible vision for whatever the issue is, but always for our country. But he's operational. He's a master legislator. He and Phil Burton, to watch them operate legislatively, is to see a master at work. And in particular for this award, nobody, nobody in the Congress, and I could go broader than that, but I'm speaking with authority that I know, nobody in the Congress did more for the Dreamers than Senator Richard Durbin. <laughs> He had a passion. He had a passion about it. He took such pride. He knew the risk that they would take when they would come forth, as Stephen and Denise did, to come forward and tell their story with their own courage, but what that meant to their families as well, and the risk that was involved in that. And he tried to protect them so much. And we says she immodestly, we passed the bill in the House of Representatives. Dick Durbin took it to the Senate, got a strong majority of votes. But in the United States Senate, that is not enough. So it fell short of the 60 votes. But what it did do was trigger something, unleash something that has taken us to where we are today within sight of passing comprehensive immigration reform that honors our values. That would not have happened. But that it had not taken me to that place. So he's part of something called the Gang of Eight, Democrats and Republicans. In the House, ours is called a task force. <laughs> they rejected the name gang. <laughs> That's one thing they could agree on. We do not want to be called a gang. <laughs> but we are working in a bipartisan way. But again, we are at a place on this because all kinds of things, are, you, you almost win, you're almost there, but it takes you closer. And this is the person who has masterminded from the head and from the heart the place where we are today. And he is the person, he is a person, and I know this without going into it, who behind the scenes has protected our values when people wanted to make it be something that could get more votes, but at what cost? But at what cost? And it's been his strength, his knowledge, his vision about something better for America that has taken us to this place. And so when that bill passes in the United States Senate, we can say, without any, well, you know, when, when you get up here and you start talking about something in politics, sometimes the superlatives come out and you say things and hyperbole sets in and pretty soon it's just boom, 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 boom. It would be impossible to exaggerate the leadership 
of Senator Richard, Richard Durbin in this. So I'm very honored to present him on the occasion of the Philip Burton Liv Immigration and Advocacy Awards dinner. Nancy Pelosi, do her award for immigration.